Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Today we're continuing on with our discussion of cost curves, but now we're going to bring it all together with our profit maximization. So we're going to ask what is the level of output that maximizes profit for a price taking firm, and we're going to show how to find it. We're going to start with our usual set of axes, dollars on the vertical axis, and the firm or the business output on the horizontal axis. And we're going to assume that the firm is a price taker. So we're going to be looking at a special case. Later on in the course, we'll look at the general case. But for the moment, assume the firm is a price taker. And so here is the market price that is faced by our firm. It's a horizontal line. But we know more than that. We know that for a price taking firm, not only is the price a horizontal line, but the price is also marginal revenue. So we know that this horizontal line is also the marginal revenue curve for the price taking firm. Why? It follows by definition. Every time the firm wants to sell another unit of output, it can do so at the market price. It takes that price as given. It doesn't have to change the price in order to sell another unit. It can sell as much or as little as it wants at this price P. So the price and the marginal revenue are the same thing. And we can put our marginal cost curve on here, just like this. And now we have all the information we need to work out the quantity that this firm would like to sell in order to maximize its profit. To work out that quantity, we just need to follow the profit maximizing rule. To maximize profit, set the level of sales at the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And that's this point here on this diagram. So the profit maximizing level of quantity for this price taking firm is the quantity where marginal revenue and marginal cost of the same thing. And I'll call that Q star down here. Of course, while we've followed the simple rule, the real question is why? Why does this work? Why will Q star be the profit maximizing output for this particular firm? Well, to see that, let's pick a different quantity. Let's pick a quantity out here to the right of Q star. Let's call that Q1. What would happen if the business decided not to produce Q star, but to produce Q1? How can we see that this will lead not to more profits, but to less profits? Well, that's easy. Notice that for all of these units out here to the right of Q star, including Q1, for that unit, the marginal cost of producing that unit is greater than the marginal revenue the marginal cost is greater than the price for our price-taking firm. So the marginal cost might be $20, whereas you can only sell the unit for, say, $18. Whenever the marginal cost is above the marginal revenue, if you produce and sell that unit, you lose money. It's costing you more to produce the extra unit than you get when you sell that unit. So you make less profit, not more. If you were producing out here at Q1, you would want to decrease your production back towards Q star. Okay, so you don't want to produce more than Q star units, but maybe you want to produce less than Q style units. So let's take this quantity, which I'll call Q2. Why doesn't the firm want to stop at Q2? Well, again, that's going to be easy. If we look at this quantity, at that quantity Q2, notice that the marginal revenue, the price for our price taking firm, is greater than the marginal cost. The marginal revenue or the price might be $18, the marginal cost might be $15. If we produce and sell this unit, we sell it for 18 bucks, it only costs us $15 to make that unit, the difference is the extra profit we make. And of course that holds for all of the units down here to the left of Q star. For these units, the marginal revenue is above the marginal cost. You can make more profit by producing Q2 and by producing all of the other units 
until you get to Q-star. Just at Q-star, that's the only level of production where marginal revenue and marginal cost are the same. You don't want to increase production because profits will go down. You don't want to decrease production because profits will go down. This is the best it gets in terms of profit maximisation. So now we've seen that this profit maximising output, Q star, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, maximises firm's profit. But that doesn't mean the firm is making a profit. This might be the best that it gets for the firm, but how do we know if the best is positive or negative? If the best is the firm making lots of money or the firm going bankrupt? That's where our average cost curve comes in. Here we've put our average cost curve on this diagram as well. Notice that it starts off very high, it falls down and it turns as it crosses the marginal cost curve. So it satisfies our rules for averages and marginals. And notice as I've drawn it here that if the firm produces exactly Q star units, then the average cost given by this average cost curve is down here. Let's call it average cost star. And you'll notice something about this particular level of average cost. You'll notice that the average cost is below the price. And if the average cost at the profit maximising output is below the price, then that's great from the firm's perspective. Because remember that that means the firm will be making positive profits. How do we know that? Well, remember that profit, by definition, is just total revenue minus total cost. But we know that total revenue for a firm is just going to be the amount of product that it sells times the price it sells it at, the quantity times the price. And we also know that total cost for a firm is just going to be the quantity that it sells times the average cost of selling that amount. How do we know that? Well, that's really easy. That's just by definition. Average cost equals total cost divided by quantity. So take quantity over the other side. Total cost equals quantity times average cost. So we know that the profit made by the firm is the difference between price times quantity, the big rectangle, and average cost times quantity, the little rectangle. So the profit of this firm is going to be given by this shaded area here. Couple of things to note. Firstly, notice that the average cost is not the minimum average cost. That's one of the common mistakes students make. They pick the minimum average cost regardless of where the firm's actually producing. The firm doesn't maximise profits by producing at minimum average cost. Why not? Well, because at minimum average cost, marginal cost, as we've drawn it here, is less than the price. The firm wants to produce more. As it produces more, average cost gets pulled up by the marginal cost. So the average cost at the profit maximising level is not the minimum average cost. It's the average cost where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Second thing to note is that we could have drawn this curve the other way. We could have had the firm making a loss. And I've drawn that case in this diagram. We've put another average cost curve on. It's a perfectly legitimate average cost curve. It starts off high, reflecting any fixed costs. It gets pulled down whenever marginal cost is less than the average cost curve. So marginal cost is less than average cost all the way until we get to this point here. After that point, which is the minimum average cost, where marginal cost and average cost are equal, the marginal cost is above the average cost and pulls it up. So that is a perfectly legitimate average cost curve. But notice in this case that if we look at our profit maximising quantity, then the average cost at that profit maximising quantity is at this level AC star. And at that level of output, Average cost is above the price, but that means that the firm is making a loss. Its total revenue 
which is simply price times quantity of sales, the area of the big, uh, sorry, of the small rectangle now, the total revenue is less than the total cost. Total cost is average cost times quantity or the area of what is now our big rectangle. So revenue, total revenue, is less than total cost. That means the firm is making a loss and the loss is given by this shaded area here. Again, note, there's absolutely no reason why we would be in this general diagram at the minimum of average cost. In fact, at the profit maximising quantity, we're back to the left of the quantity that's the minimum of average cost. That's because we're after the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, not minimum average cost. Secondly, note that while the firm is making a loss at Q star, it can't do any better than that by producing another quantity back here to the left or out here to the right. Q star still maximises profit. It just happens to be that profit is negative. By producing any other quantity to the left or to the right of Q star, the business will just make matters worse. The business will lose even more money. One thing that we may want to consider is whether it's actually worthwhile for the business to shut down. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next topic. Whether the best this business can do is say, forget it, shut its doors and leave the market. But it certainly cannot produce and sell any other quantity and make less profit. This profit maximises just happens to be the maximum profit is negative. It's a loss. So what are the takeaways from this video? We've got two key ones. Firstly, marginal cost together with marginal revenue tells us the quantity that maximises profit. The quantity that maximises profit is where Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Second, the relationship between price and average cost at the profit maximising quantity tells us whether the firm is making a profit or a loss. So marginal cost tells us how much to produce. Average cost tells us whether the business is making a profit or a loss by producing that level of output. Finally, a technical point. If you don't like technical points, see you next time. But you may be curious that when I drew the marginal cost curve, I ignored this possibility. This is a possibility where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. Remember, price is marginal revenue for our price-taking firm. So this is a quantity where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. But I didn't say that was the profit maximising quantity. Let's call this Q3. I said that the profit maximising quantity was out here at Q star. What's the difference? They've both got marginal cost equaling marginal revenue. There's nothing wrong with this marginal cost curve. It's perfectly legitimate to have the marginal cost curve cutting the marginal revenue curve more than once. But Q3 is not the profit maximising quantity. In fact, Q3 is the profit minimising quantity. How do we know this? Well, let's do the same exercise as before. If we pick a point just to the right of Q3, if we pick a quantity just to the right, notice that for that quantity, marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. Marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost means that producing that unit increases profits. So we clearly don't want to stop at Q3. We want to keep producing further out to the right of Q3. Well, what about if we were off to the left of Q3? Well, all these units to the left of Q3, notice that they're units where the marginal cost is greater than the marginal revenue. 
But if marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue, we're losing money on these units. So all of these units between zero and Q3, as I've drawn the diagram, lose the business money. The business only starts recovering that money and only has a chance to make positive profits by producing more than Q3. Q3 is the worst the business can do. Q stars the best the business can do. So we need to modify our profit maximisation rule a little bit. To maximise profits, set quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, like Q star, but also like Q3, and the marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve from below. Like at Q star, marginal cost is coming up below marginal revenue and then goes above marginal revenue. In contrast, at Q3, our profit minimising point, marginal cost is cutting marginal revenue from above. So Q star is our profit maximising quantity. It's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and where marginal cost is cutting marginal revenue from below. And for those of you who followed the mathematical videos on this, this second bit, this cut from below, is just our second order condition. Talk to you next time.